Well, this is a follow-up to the video I did on the uh, U.S. Embassy attack um, a number of days ago um, in Benghazi. You know, what's, what's interesting is, so far, everything that the White House has put out has been nothing but lies. Um, something stunk about this story from the word go, and uh, now that we're starting to see what's going on, Here's here's my thoughts. Here's what I think, and this 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 is really this is really bad. Come to find out, these two Navy SEALs that were killed, um, you know, they weren't with the Navy anymore. They were, uh, I guess, essentially contractors that were hired. My understanding is through the State Department. Their job was to retrieve, locate, and retrieve weapons that were given to the rebels during the overthrow of Muammar Gaddafi. Now, here's where it gets really bad, and I want you people to really think about this. The ambassador, who come to find out in his journal, um, as well as I believe there was another news source that I can't quite re recall, the ambassador knew he was on a basically a kill list. Now, what's interesting is all the covering, you know, the cover-up, um, you know, blaming it on this dumb video that some idiot made, you know, they're trying to, they were trying initially to blame it on that. Well, now, now we find out, here's what I think happened. Something set these people off. You... You can blame it on the video. You can blame it on whatever. But here, here's here's what's really down low, dirty ass to me. The ambassador was the individual who brokered the weapons deal between these, quote, rebels in the United States. Now, come to find out, the rebels are basically Al-Qaeda, Muslim Brotherhood. Um... We had, well, no, we have a president that has taken it upon himself to have United States military-grade weaponry uh, allowed to fall into the hands of Al-Qaeda, our sworn enemy, terrorists. Um, and you've got the guy who brokered the deal, the ambassador, killed. You've got... The two Navy SEALs who were basically uh, contractors, you know, hired to find these weapons, killed. And you've got, you got to ask yourself, we had advanced, we now know that there was advanced warning of this. We've seen anywhere from a couple of weeks to a couple of days advanced notice that this was going to happen. Nothing was done. Not a single step. Didn't increase security at any of the embassies. Nothing. When this about four-hour firefight firefight was going on, we did nothing. We sat idly by. It's almost like they wanted people to just be done away with. The the ambassador who broke into what brokered a weapons deal, dead. These uh, two ex Navy SEALs or Navy SEALs that were uh, contractors were killed. It seems like the people who knew what was going on just were killed. Where, where was our intelligence? Where was our military? Where were the people? Come on, you can't tell me that with all the technology we have, we didn't know what was going on, that we didn't have a satellite that could see a four-hour firefight, that we didn't have an asset anywhere close enough, that we couldn't have sent a, a cruise missile in. I mean, we could put those things, you know, through a building's window. Why couldn't have we set it off, you know, outside the compound? To distract these people. Why, we're, why didn't we get any assets in there? There's something seriously crooked going on here. And I'll tell you what, our country sold, not, not our country, this administration put weapons in the hands of terrorists. And what's interesting is the National Defense Authorization Act, the NDAA, this is the one that Congress passed and the president signed, and they're all gleeful that they now have the authority that they can turn around and De arrest and detain indefinitely American citizens just based on the fact that 
well, not even a fact, just based on the suspicion that may they may somehow be involved with a terrorist. Um, it's a pretty low threshold to violate someone's constitutional rights. Now, a federal court has ruled that portion be unconstitutional. However, an appeals court superseded the original federal court. So as of right now, the NDAA uh, is it's 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 intact. They can enforce it now. My question is, is if the government can arrest and violate someone's constitutional rights, arrest and detain indefinitely without charge, someone who they just suspect of working with a terrorist, what the hell is it that our administration, our State Department did by selling these weapons to Muammar, not Muammar, I'm sorry, they sold weapons to the, uh, the rebels, which were Al-Qaeda, which were Muslim Brotherhood. These people are not nice people. Why aren't the, Obama needs to be arrested for the under the NDAA Act? He directly sold weapons. He supported terrorists. Let me tell you something. Muammar Gaddafi was a son of a bitch. Oh, he was. Um, uh, President Reagan kicked his ass real good, killed half his family with a cruise missile attack, kind of put him on a straight and narrow. He really didn't mess with the United States too much after that in the 80s. Um, in fact, when George Bush went in there and, and knocked the holy hell out of the Iraqi army, um, Muammar Gaddafi kind of threw his doors open and invited us in because he had some weapons that he wasn't supposed to have. So he was still a son of a bitch, but he was a son of a bitch that we could deal with. You know, just like Mubarak. Now we got a bunch of Muslim Brotherhood running around, and you got Al-Qaeda mixed in with all this. And uh, this is exactly what uh, President Obama wants. Now, don't take my word for it. Go look. Don't don't use sources like PMS, LSD, and and you know the Huffington Post and, and the media matters. You know because media doesn't matter to them. You know, go look at the facts. Don't trust the White House. I mean, all they do is lie. They've been proven they lie. They lie. They lie. They lie. This whole thing has been a cover up. And media matters. And the Huffington Puffington Post and all these left leaning liberal rag outlets. They've been nothing but apologists and carrying this administration's water. So, folks, ask yourself, you know, why a four-hour firefight and we couldn't get a single asset in there? Why? Why? Did, we, did somebody needlessly let those people die? Were they told to stand down? Did we have military commanders or intelligence assets that were told to stand down? Did we have those assets that were so cowardice that they wouldn't put their own butts on the line, their own career on the line to go save these people, that they were just obeying orders? Is this what really ha is this what's going on? Is this what it's boiled down to? Or are we just do we just have an administration that is ignorant and has perpetuated a culture of ignorance in our intelligence and our senior military uh, advisors that are supposed to be able to look at a uh, situation like this? Something stinks. We haven't gotten to the bottom of this. This this, this stinks the holy hell. And I, I, I would urge you to call your members of Congress and ask them that, you know, that they look into this and you want answers and you won't shut up until you get them because something stinks. This administration has lied to us repeatedly. And this is just on this. Don't trust them. Don't listen to them. Push for the answer. Use your head. You know what's going on. Put your partisanship aside. You know, we've got you know, four dead people here that deserve answers. You know, you, you can be cowards and hide behind your political party. I'm just simply asking folks to say, you know what, I want to know what happened. I want to know who's responsible. Four people are dead. Somebody screwed the pooch. So, you know, I appreciate you watching. I just wanted to follow up because I kind of got out on front of some of this uh, early on. Um, but, uh. You know, I think if enough people see this and they they say, you know what, something doesn't smell right, and they start, you know, calling their congressmen, calling the White House, demanding answers, I think you know, eventually the truth will come out. Slowly but surely, it is coming out bit by bit. But uh, let's push for the truth, and I appreciate you watching.